Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Monday, the 24th of April, getting uh, wrapping up the uh, month of April this week. Let's just look at this real quickly. So the uh, one-minute E-mini is looking like the key support right now in the near term is at 41.56. If it takes that out, I have a 41.53 target by, uh, I don't want to move it over to the right too much. Let me just, I'll, I'll, I'll eyeball it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, by about uh, 10, 10, we're at 10.06, right? 10.07 right now. I would say if 41.56 uh, cracks, this, uh, 41.55 cracks the support, then we should see the 41.53 level quite quickly, actually, within the next, um, oh, I'd say 30 minutes or so, maybe, yeah, 30 minutes. All right. And what we're looking at here, look, out, look at the symmetry. I love this bar symmetry. I love the um, technique that I talk about so often, which is the rectangle. Let me see if I can find it here just to show you what it looks like. Well, it looks like a rectangle, right? There it is. So I have a technique that I call uh, watching the rectangles. One is a long, narrow rectangle, and the other is a large rectangle. In the narrow rectangle, you can, you can see a price stay within this tube, this <clears throat> horizontal, this horizontal uh, tube, and it can go for a long time. And every time you think it's going to break out, it doesn't break out. And every time you think it's going to break down, it doesn't break down. It just stays on the other thing, bing, 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 wiggling along like a little ping pong ball inside of that little plastic container. And then suddenly it'll break out, and usually it'll break to the downside, and then try to revisit the rectangle. What happens next is important. Or you get the large rectangle. But look at this. This starts off, this is the E-mini. Four o'clock on Friday, it suddenly has a pop after the uh, the peak D in the 10-minute chart, the E-mini, and then it goes into a rectangle formation. It's first of all a narrow rectangle, then it widens and it gets a little wider, but overall, it's been, this price has been between 41, let's call it 4160, it's actually 4159, and let's go all the way down to 4151, let's call it 4150. So it's between 50 and 60 for all this time, it snuck out at just a tad at, at one o'clock uh, last night, and then it went right back in. And now look at this. Uh, what was that in today? Uh, 11 o'clock. Yes. So that was on. Oh, that was actually going back to the 20 to 20th. So for a couple of days now, trading days. It's been in this range, and then overnight it was snug. Remember the rule of the, the rectangle is you can go slightly higher. If you go higher than that rectangle resistance, especially D, E, or F in, in the peak, counting the peaks in the Chapman wave, be careful because you, when you come back down, if you take out the halfway marker of this long, narrow rectangle, there's a really good chance not only are you going to test the low, but you'll break the low. Well, lo and behold, it broke the low this morning at, uh, this was this morning at about 1.00. Yeah, 2.10 this morning, Eastern Time. And then it went in the 10-minute chart, peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And then a brand new peak A, peak C, D. And then it popped above to peak E. And that says, once again, uh, another peak E in the, uh, the fourth, fifth highest peak. If at any point in the next, I'd say, hour, it can be a little longer, but within the next hour, if it starts to trade under 41.48, that's the midpoint of this large, long Narrow rectangle, there's a good chance it goes all the way down to the 41, uh, 38 area or even lower. But in the meantime, it's tr it's trying its best to hold steady. Because these are techniques that I'll be discussing in my webinar coming up a week from Wednesday for subscribers. You can become a subscriber uh, to, to my newsletter. You have a 30-day uh, free trial. In other words, you pay for it, but you get the money back if you're unhappy. And in this particular webinar... I'm going to be looking at what do I think? What is showing enough strength or weakness right now to be either eliminated as a potential um, a mover to the upside in the next few months or one or, or stocks that look like they're holding so well 
that there's really a good chance they're going to have a decent rally uh, in the summer. All right, it's as simple as that. I'm going to also be discussing techniques that we can use. Uh, for instance, I've been saying for, for a long months now, I've been saying the bonds, as I look at it now, looking at the 30-year T-bond continuous contract, are stuck in a range. So now we've got a large rectangle, which has now become a narrow rectangle, and I can go like this and give you a halfway marker. And that halfway marker is just over there to over there. Uh, I do it by eye because I, I've just done this by eye for so long. That's the, that's the level. And it says if on a weekly basis – U.S. bonds, perhaps I should do the TLT because more of you are looking at uh, the, the stocks that you can just punch in very easily on your uh, platforms. So I look at the TNT, which is 104.92. So if, it's a, if the bonds are able to close for two out of three weeks above 109 points, it's called 110. That'll say, aha, now we're going to be move, moving to the right. If it just goes one pop to the upside and then breaks down, the level to monitor, and this is going to be really important because I've said that I think that from my, my analysis that bonds are stuck in a range and they're going to be stuck in a range for, for some time. They're not going up. They're not going to break out on the upside, but they also won't break down. So that says that if bonds on a weekly basis, even just one week, close below 103, it says it's still stuck in a range, but there's a real good chance it could go all the way down to the 98 air, 99, 98. And if it's still in this range, and maybe by the end of this week, they're starting to trade at about 106.50. It's at 104.94 right now. It can move towards the upper part of the range, but it, yields are stuck in a range. That's, what, that's been my contention. So now let's just do this real quickly. The nine-period moving average is so far above the 14-period moving average that it's giving tremendous support to the market. And that's the reason why, even though we went short, we went short via the S&P rather than the Dow, because the S&P was just a tad weaker than the Dow, I, I, I made it stop so tight that we, we'll still make a profit um, if we get taken out. But I'm not prepared to. I'm not prepared to hold it because there's enough strength to even see a push into the 34,100s at three points, uh, 260 points from where we are right now at 33859 up 48. Um, and until we really start to trade, you can't just go there. You've got to be trading under 33,600. I would say 33,500 to say, aha, sell signal probably going to be in place very soon, but not at the moment. And look at that weekly chart, just testing, testing, testing the inside track uh, resistance zone. And their monthly charts, the same thing. Look at the S&P. I'm going to spend a little time on this as we start off the week. I will be able to do, um, I've set it up so that I can do, I think I'm able to do the 1 to 2 o'clock hour. That's where Larry's show is. Usually Larry's, I, I think, on his way to Las Vegas. Um, and I, so I will be doing um, the, the hour at that particular time. So let me just show you. These are techniques that I'll discuss. And although there was so much bearish news last week, I kept saying, yeah, we, we are going to go short. We, we've, we've still got our core position, now Dow positions, all the way from October of this past year. Uh, we've had trading positions taking nice gains off. And on the very short term trading position on the three times long, we're now three times short the S&P. I've already seen it taken out and maybe even get back to the long side. I don't know if it's aggressive, but I'm just holding on to this choppy, choppy phase right now. But choppy is not a bear market. I don't see the bear phase just yet. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So uh, we've got Earl and Seminole on the line in Florida. Hi, Earl. How are you? Hi, Basil. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm well, thank you. Yes. You would uh, like, like to, to have look you take at... a look at a down target for GLD. Okay. So, folks, GLD is the Spider Gold Trust. It trades at a tenth of the uh, uh, spot gold um, price. I actually, personally, I like to look at IAU, which is one tenth the price of the GLD. Oh, I used to have this all notated and gone. Anyway, it's the same thing as the GLD. It just trades at one tenth the price of the GLD, which trades at one tenth the price of the, uh, of the gold. But this is what I'm looking at. So there's a technique that I discuss, and I'll do a, quite a bit more in my webinar coming up a week from Wednesday uh, for subscribers, because what I like to look at is a technique that I discovered years ago called the uh, Chapman Wave. Uh, inside this is this is where you get um, within one bar after you get a leg D on the upside there's a pullback and then within three bars there's another high I always like to look at that and say that's like an instant restart and that's basically saying <clears throat> that although I could continue the wave count just alphabetically A B C D E F G there's never an H I can also consider that at this particular point, because of the strength within three bars to take out, this is actually a gap up within two bars to, to a new recovery high, the MACD was still good, that there could be an instant restart. So basically what I've done over the last, the only change, one of the couple of changes I've made to my CD uh, introducing the um, uh, Chapman Wave Web, uh, methodology, the book that I, I did back in 2005, is that I, I decided that I would uh, say to people, look, just count A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And when you get to G, always put G slash C because the reason is I've seen so many times that that energy that's been uh, expedited on the upside um, allows it to pull back and then make that D. That's where you've got to be careful. So in this particular case, we've got G slash C right here on the day of... Uh, this is the 4th, the 5th of April, pulls the gaps down and for two days makes a little doji low, turns around and within three sessions, as I love this bar symmetry, takes out that left side high, spikes to 100, did it hit 190? No, it hit 190.41, just over 990, 
makes a little perfect doji candle. It looks like a plus sign. And then it gaps down. So now I've got an island reversal. Now, I, I usually do this only to demonstrate something. It doesn't mean anything other than I'm pointing it out. This yellow and pink circle right here always denotes a chip potential chip instant restart. What I'm going to do right now, I'll take it away soon. I'll keep it right now. This little, this little semicircle, uh, this circle right here with the doji candle designates an island reversal. But because you're trading something that uh, trades overseas, pre-market, you're always going to get gaps. So I'm just making it, I'm doing this just to point it out. But basically, I'm going to take it away now because it doesn't have anything to do with the techniques what I'm using right now. What I am using is the arch formation with the nine period moving average. And this is what I was talking about in the Dow. This is what I'm anticipating. Because of the strength of the nine period moving average in the daily chart of the GLD, Spider Gold Trust, it's only now with a, with a good few days, a one, two, three, four, five, six, this is the seventh day of a pullback from that high that was made at 190.43. Uh, what we're looking at here, we started to make lower lows and lower highs. So this is the first up, and I had drawn in a big rectangle formation uh, some time ago, and I said, I suspect we can go a little higher, but this is the rectangle that we're going to monitor. So now what I'll do is I'm going to take that away, and I'm going to say to you, this is what I'd be looking at and I'd go for just step by step in targets because gold has been so strong. I'll go to this little doji candle right here and I'll move to the right to get bar symmetry. It's not from the high bar. I want to be a little conservative. So, I mean, I'm a, a little aggressive here. I'm going to go to a little sooner time frame. And this says that by the 3rd of May, that was, is, oh, that's the day of my webinar, 3rd of May next Wednesday, or Wednesday week. Um, I'll make this green. If the low of Friday, which is 183.22, if that is taken out, then I can say there's a good chance that we're going to make lower lows and lower highs. This is in the shorter term, and that would target about 180 as a target price by the 3rd of May. But it's got this support line right here. So you've got to go one step at a time at this particular point. Yes, it does look like it's moving lower. Normally, I'd like to go to the, the, the peak just before the, the high. But this is a little bit aggressive. So I want to make it a little bit more conservative. So that's why I've got one is slightly aggressive in time. The other is a little bit more uh, relaxed looking at the support levels. But the support level says that by the uh, 26th of uh, April, there's a chance that 182 to 181.70 will become support. Now, that also means that the nine period moving average hasn't yet crossed over to negative, to pink. So there's still internal strength there. So there could be a little bit of a bounce. And my, my eye says, probably you need to move this out a little bit more, maybe make it the end of the week, next week, that it could test 180 to 179. But that's what I'm looking at. And one of the reasons is I want to be a little bit conservative is gold had such a big move to the upside that I would have anticipated if there was really internal selling, we would have had a really quick move. And by Thursday or Friday, we would already be at 182 to 181 and now it'd be even lower. And that says to me, it's more a slow rollover and that the strength in the weekly chart is suggesting that this is more a digestive phase than a, just a major sell-off. And to, do, to go with that, let me look at the DXY, that's the dollar, and you can see the dollar's making this little arch formation, struggling to break out and find support. Um, well, it is finding support in the 101 area, but 101.79 was the last low, and we've tried to rally. We've had six, six days, one, two, three, four, five, five days in which to make a leg B, and it hasn't done that. So the dollar is stalling. So I don't want to get too carried away by looking at gold and say, oh, oh, this is going to be the big move. It isn't the big move. This is just a digestive phase. And if you look at the GDX as a good example, at 33.67, um, it's finding support and the nine is still over the 14. And that says to me, there is still residual strength. So, so your question exactly is? My question was, I was looking for a, a bottom target. 
And I think you nailed it. Yeah. Okay. So so I like that because you weren't looking. You didn't say to me, oh, I, I want to shorten anything like I, I It's not that I don't think gold isn't a short potential. I don't see it right now as a short potential. Maybe it'll develop into that. But at this particular point, I'm thinking it more as a place where you want to consider buying. And if you are in it, you want to add, you've taken something off, you want to add to it. But this whole cluster where I have this inside, um, this, uh, this um, instant restart, that says you could even go down to the 177 level. Well, as a short, 183 to 177, that's, that's a nice nice set of points. But gold is in the area. Uh, can you hold on a second? Because I want to look at gold together with silver. There's something that I noted over the weekend I thought I should tell you. Can you hold on? Yeah, I'll hold, sure. Okay, good. Folks, we've, we've got all, we're holding on the line. We're looking at the, the gold. We're looking at the GDX. We're looking at silver. I'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, folks, we're on with uh, Earl and Seminole. We're looking at uh, gold. Where do, where do I think the support will be? I'm looking at silver. There's a potential dreaded H. Let me just show you this pattern for those who are new to my, to my uh, handiwork. So I look at patterns all the time. Just straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, a mix of one and two and one and three. Yes, this H pattern in red, because if it takes out this left side low, especially after just a peak A or a B, and then takes out the low, you can go a lot lower. So there's a chance. You can see this peak F right here. Uh, it, it, I had this price time match in the silver contract. It broke out to the, to the day, and then it went even higher. And then it went to a leg F, and then look what happened. It made a, a peak. About three days ago, it went to gray A, and now it's pulling back. But that 9 is still way over the 14. It looks like it wants to pull back, but at the same time, there's internal strength, and that's what's holding it. If silver 
starts to drop below 24.65, uh, close below 24.65, then I think you can go all the way down to 24.20 or 24 in the short term or maybe even a little lower. So as I'm looking at the, and that's that pattern right here, and if I'm looking at these patterns, the weekly chart is still so strong and the monthly chart finally broke out above the long-term trend line, downtrend line, but it, the week is still young. So far, it's holding just fractionally above this trend line in a falling axe formation. So I have to tell you something about this. If the dollar has the dollar has had absolutely every opportunity over the last three sessions nobody would have said a word other than okay gold's pulling back time for the dollar to have a little bit of a bounce it did this beautiful bar symmetry to the 100.79 level um, on the 4th of april and then it bounced and it hasn't gone further if you look at the eur usd this is the this is the a euro dollar currency pair it's got this pattern i can't count it any other way but a peak c and it looks to me like it wants to get to a leg d above uh the 8th the 14th of april high of 1. Uh, 107 and that that'll start a leg d and then i think you can take a bit of a breather and if you've got the usd jpy which has actually held a lot better than dollar look at this if the dollar had moved like this it would be fabulous so the uh, yen is is up uh, 46 cents at 134.58. So that's the reason why I'm saying I wouldn't get too carried away about looking at gold in terms of the short side because I see enough buying come in in waves that it says it should give us support. That's not to say it couldn't pull back and you couldn't make money. I just mean as a whole position, I prefer to look at it as maybe a place to enter so if you're looking at the GDX of 33.67, I would say 32.70, around about 32.75. If it takes that out, it could drop a little bit further. And GD, uh, sorry, GLD, which is what your question was. But I want you to go to it in a kind of not a roundabout way, but looking at it from all sides to say, um, in a phase like this, when there's been such a powerful move, surely you would anticipate um, a momentum to the downside to quickly take profits. But I'm looking at this and saying, you know, folks are kind of reluctant to be taking profits that unless something happens and the dollar, and I have to put uh, some weight on the dollar to say, if the dollar actually can rally two points, I don't think the gold can go much higher. I think definitely it will start to move lower, below 180. But at this particular point, I'm looking at it and I'm saying my first support level would be anywhere between 183.50 to 182. But my target is just a slow kind of digestive phase that says maybe 180 to 179. That's going to be key support. I hope that helps you. But that's the way I've been looking at it over the week when I, uh, weekend when I was looking at Boy, the gold. Sure, you sure? Basil, can I ask you a question? Sure. Fire away. You have so much knowledge in your head. How do you get to sleep at night? Well, you know, that's it's a really good question because um, um, I don't – I think part of the problem is that I don't retain all this stuff. I, some of it, when it comes to the market, charts are like I, – I have like an instant recall for the chart patterns themselves. But even when I do the charts, I'm not even looking at what they are, what the prices. I'm just looking at the patterns. So it sounds like, yep, there's a tremendous amount going on. But I have to recall it as these things appear because if you had to ask me, for instance, I've been looking at Coca-Cola all morning to say, well, earnings came out. They must have been good. I must have looked at the price at least eight times. Ask me now what the price is. I have not a clue. I do, I do know the pattern of Coca-Cola very well because I know it, it pulled back from the high. Yep, there it is at, at 60, 64.26, up 21 cents. It is 64.99, just missed a round number high. But, yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, but I must say, I don't well, necessarily I, need I, a lot I of I meant sleep. that as a compliment because I've never met or seen anybody that has the knowledge of trading that you do. And I commend you, sir. Well, I, you know, when, when it comes to training, there are, there are a lot of us. I mean, uh, Tom and, uh, and Larry, I mean, they've, you know, they, they, they do this as well all the time. So we build up a store of knowledge. And that's really the thing that I do. I do appreciate and I understand it's a compliment. But I must say it's, it's 
I wouldn't call it a gift. It's just persistence doing it over and over and over. So we've done it not for years or decades, but for a lot of decades. So thank you very much. Well, you be blessed, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate that so much, Earl. Thank you, especially coming from you. Thank you very much. So we've been watching the GDX together. So, folks, let's get back to this. What we're looking at is um, I want you to do there are a couple of things I didn't want to forget. I had a question in the YouTube about Exxon. You know, I said Exxon is like a buy and hold, and it's been that way as long as I can remember. I remember 15, maybe it's 12, could be 15 years ago. I had in one of my one of my two three day webinar classes. I had someone who came in. Um, I used to have level one for two two full days from uh, eight thirty in the morning until four thirty in the afternoon. I used to when I was finished. I'm still suffering from the voice thing, uh, the scratchiness because I would go for two days and then I do have a third day for a more advanced course. And I, I love them, but I, I just it, it really did a job on my throat. So. Um, in those particular sessions, I remember there was one person, uh, she came in, she says, I inherited ExxonMobil. I, I don't know what to do. I said, are you, I mean, do you really want to get out of it? It gives you a dividend and it's something that helps you, uh, you know, maintain a lifestyle and all that. She says, no, I, I, I like the dividend. So I said, well, why don't you do this? Keep your ExxonMobil. And let's see, let me just go back now and see when, I, where, when it could have been. Um, Okay, so I'll squash this one here. This is a monthly chart. Squash, 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 squash. Oh, uh, oh, this is oh, it changed to XO, XOM when it took over mobile, but it was Exxon. And um, we are going back a long time, so I'm going to go back to about 2007, eight, somewhere around there, and was trading maybe at 80. Well, the darn thing went down to almost into the 20s. But look where it is now at 117. So what I'd said to her was, we don't know where Exxon's going. It's an incredible company. Um, as I recall, it was, wasn't it? Let me just have a look here if I can actually see it from here. Uh, was it Exxon? Was it Exxon? That was 1906. That was the uh, where they, they came in with the... Um, with all the rulings. Uh, anyway, so I said to her, why don't you use the dividends for stocks that you like and just start putting money into the into those and you keep your, your core uh, Exxon and you'll just keep getting dividends from that. So this is what I'm saying, that I don't wouldn't even touch Exxon if this is a very long-term position. And here it is at 117, just off the all-time high, Amazing. I'll be right back uh, and uh, I'll be back. Dow's up 17, as we done too. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee. 
at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Our board we're back. Dow's up 17, so I'll give back some. And we're, we're going to go straight to Sue in Bethesda, Maryland. Hi, Sue. How are you? Good morning, Beso. Thank you for taking my call. I appreciate my that. Thanks. So Hello? You, would, you would like to look at? TMMMM. So I that's thought it's a... 107.20, I'm just wondering that, should I keep it because the earning coming or should I keep it for long term? So, Sue, this is the thing that I'm looking at you. It's, it, it, this is, folks, this is Triple M. This is a, a monster, monster company, and uh, but it's been in such a bear market since January of 2018. It hit 259 at a PD in the monthly chart. Oh, I had this all drawn in correctly, and then I forgot to, I took it out. There was a bar symmetry from the low back at 134 round number uh, back in 2015. Screams up to 259.77 uh, as, as a peak D, um, January of 2018. And then it just makes its way down. It keeps making these H patterns down, down, down. And then it makes a low of 114, makes a lower low than in 2018. March of 2020. And then it runs to peak A, peak C, D. E, and then it does a beautiful bar symmetry. I have this drawn in from that high that was made back on uh, May 2021. And then it comes back down and it can't hold 140 and it goes lower. So um, I, this is what I'm looking at. So if you are, well, first of all, did you consider this to be a longer term position or a, a trading position? What, what? And, and did you even think of putting it, or did you put a stop in, and what would the stop be if you actually did that when you put your trade on? Did you put it on about two weeks ago? Uh, no, I didn't put the stop in, no. You didn't, okay. So is this a recent position, or have you been holding it since March? Uh, not that long, I mean, maybe okay. not that long. Okay. I have right. it not that long. Okay. I have so it did you when it was it is uh, one oh seven something. Okay. So this is the re this is the reason why I ask you those questions. It has shown no strength at all that it can sustain up until the past three or four weeks. And now it's gone peak A, it pulls back, it holds the hundred and sixteen low of early April. And then it goes to a peak B. I just want to double check that I didn't do something wrong here. I'm almost sure it made it by a couple of pennies. And then it has a doji candle on the 14th of 107.12. Next day, the low is 107.10. Yes, that is a peak B, and then it's going to a C. So now what we're doing, I think earnings come out tomorrow? Yes, yeah. Okay. That's why I asked you. So you see... If it has a really good, pleasant surprise, and it pops to the, uh, if it goes from 105 right now, and let's just say it closes around about 105, and tomorrow the earnings, yes. I think, do the earnings come out after the bell tomorrow or during the day? Do you know? Oh, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I know yeah, it's tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not sure early. either. I, I think it's during the day. I don't think it's after the bell. It might even be early. 
but it's really not it's not a good looking chart at all so let's let me ask you the scenario what if the earnings are good and it bounces but by friday it's back at 105 would you just hold on or would you have taken some profit off? Let's just say it goes to 107 again. Would you just keep holding it? Um, or it, it, in other words, is this a short-term trade? Because if you're looking at a longer-term trade, I think your risk is to 101. But I'm oh, looking at goodness. it, and, and I think that over a period of two months, I would not be surprised at all, at all if it gets to 110. I think it's starting to build some strength but it's not there yet. You need time. So if you want to ask yeah. my opinion, if you're asking my opinion what you should do at 105.16, you're down two points. I, I yeah. don't really, I would not like to see you down three points and then it starts to go down to test the 102 level. Because my thinking here is that when Triple M finally gets its act together, let's just say the earnings uh, are not great, but the outlook is quite good. I'm not sure how that would work, but if it did, then I would say to you, I would rather buy strength. So this is what I'm going to say to you. Look, you've got your position. I would take, at this particular point, I just take something off right now, just so that you say, oh, I haven't got my full position and it's going down. I I, I think you've... You called me a long time ago, isn't that so? And I think it was the same thing, that you had a position and it went against you, and we were looking at it together, and eventually it came back. But I can't remember what you did in the interim period. Am I correct? Oh, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know if you remember, <laughs> but I'm almost sure you had called yeah. me sometime, sometime about yeah. two years yeah. ago. And I'm just going to yeah. say to you, <clears throat> because you've called me, it means you're worried about it. So let's just say, I don't know how many shares you've got, but let's just say you lose $1,000 or even $2,000 on a stock that's trading at 105. You can make that up. You can, that's no problem making up the $2,000. But if it turns into $5,000, then it sits on your head and you've got a stock that's not making higher highs and higher highs, higher highs and higher lows, it's making lower highs and lower lows. So I I, uh -huh. I I don't want to be responsible for you losing out if this thing comes out with earnings and it jumps five points and you say, Thank oh, you, my God. Yeah. But I would say to you, take a little bit off and then let's look at it again, even tomorrow or Monday or Wednesday. Let's look at it together and see what you can do. But I wouldn't have my full position here. I'd rather say I know what I can lose right now, which is two points. I don't know what I can yeah. lose tomorrow if it goes against me. And if it rallies, then you've still got your stock. Maybe take even half off. You can always make that back. But I don't want you to sit there, yeah. especially when you call me today and you're down two points. You know, being down two points on a $105, $107 stock, that shouldn't be a big deal at all because you should at least have four points of a stop. But it sounds to me like you don't really want to take that risk. And it's not a, look, it's not a good looking stock at all. If it starts to move much nicer, and let's just say in two weeks' time, Triple M is trading at 108.50 to 109.70. I will say to you, you know what? This is the first time that uh, Triple M is starting to make higher highs and higher lows. Now we can consider uh -huh. it. But I, right now, it just sounds to me you've got a little risk that you don't, you're not really prepared to take. And I, I just feel take something off. Think about how much you want to take off. You can leave part yeah. of it on, but feel that, you see, if you take something off, you've got that money to put back to work later on. Yeah. Oh, you, there it is. You like that? And, and, yeah. and, and, and I, Sue. I, I appreciate in, that for your recommendation. Sue. I mean, Sue. For your, your, for uh, in, your, in the, yep, in the thank den. Thank you for your help. Hey, Sue, listen to me. In the den, someone's just written, Basil, problem with Triple M is the lawsuits regarding earplugs and chemical spills. So that to me is not a good thing. So I, I, I agree. I, I remember now the lawsuits. Um, I, I wasn't going to bring it up because I wasn't very specific in my mind what it is. But I'm going to say to you, take something off and then we can look at it again maybe Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, is that okay? okay? I'm that. Think about it. I might okay. take thank off too, Mike. <laughs> okay. Know. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for calling.
All right, we'll be back, folks. Basil Chap with Tiger Technicians Hour. I will be doing the one o'clock show. That's an every show. I've, I've, I've made space for it, and I'll be back later. But we're going to have one more segment to go. And I'll tell you what I'm looking at. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I just wanted to show you. Remember, I drew this line in the one-minute chart when I started the show, and I drew the support levels, and I said I didn't want to move this to the right. I just it means I got to do something else, so I kept it there. But now I've moved it to exactly where I had the, the pinpoint there. So this is where I would put the X in. So it got to the 41.53 level, three bars late, two bars late, actually. And uh, within that context, it's continued down. And you remember the 10-minute chart, I said the long rectangle formation. I'm going to do more of this when I do Larry's hour uh, coming up today. And I said we're right here on the cusp of that 41.49 uh, area. Uh, I'll talk about it later on. We've made a peak E. We've gone to an FG. We've gone to a peak G in the 10-minute chart. Never had a chance to do all the notation there. So there's F and there's G. So uh, we're going to wrap it up in a moment. Yes, I had a question about Amazon. I'll talk about it. I tried to explain how Amazon sales have doubled in five years, but they show no earnings. Is there some fraud involved? Um, so, yeah, I think it's the wrong way of thinking about it. They have plowed the money back into the company uh, as working capital. That's really what's happened. It's, uh, I mean, it's not like they didn't earn per se. I just they spent to be able to create a monopoly. Well, I shouldn't say monopoly, but we know that in some ways it's kind of like a monopoly. Okay, so let's just get back to the market. <clears throat> when the, in that hour, I'm going to look at 
uh, DNK, NDKNG. I don't know why we didn't buy it. I said it looks very good. It's done the one to one boss symmetry. It's looking good. This is DraftKings sports betting. But in the meantime, let's look at the market. So <clears throat> we're looking at a sideways move as the technicals start to weaken one by one. But the nine is still over the 14 in the daily chart. The S&P is the same thing. The nine is now still over the 14, but the price has just slipped again underneath the nine. It's a process. Unless it's a smash to the downside, it's a process of making slightly lower highs and lower lows. Or you can get a pop to the upside as long as the nine is very good. That's internal strength. I'll be back again and check out our opening call our webinar for subscribers coming up Wednesday week, May the 3rd. I'll be back.